The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, here we are back in the X Zone after that news break. And uh, it's always great having you back with us, as our new affiliates are just joining us. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Talk Star Radio Network. Uh, let me see here. Talk Star Mutual Broadcast Network, XZBN, and on Channel 32 on Simul TV. My guest this hour, Exo Nation, is Jason Eastwood. And Jason has uh, toured with the Beach Boys, Journey, Boston. And uh, he's into music. And, uh, of course, we're going to be talking about music, how it affects one. And we're also going to be talking about healing, th uh, healing through music, listening into the best self. It's available on Jason's website, which is great, uh, guitarfulness.com. And joining me now is Jason Eastwood. Uh, Jason, welcome to the X-Zone. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here on the X-Zone. I just want to clear something up. I didn't sure. tour with the Beach Boys Journey in Boston. My band played some festivals where we we played on the same stages as them so i didn't play in the bands i just uh i shared some festivals or uh, played some festivals with them okay so let me see where did where did craig where did you get that information i'd like to clear it up <laughs> just give me a sec craig here I shared uh, stages uh, with uh, them uh during extensively with various acts Okay, I can understand where you got that from. It says, after touring extensively with various musical acts and sharing in the stage with musical icons. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you, shared, so, so you, didn't, you didn't tour with them. You played on the same stage as they did. Yeah, I met times. them all. Yeah, and I met them all. I mean, those are all heroes of mine. And to yeah. play, I mean, we played uh, a little festival circuit here in Canada where you're familiar with Canada. I'm in mm -hmm. the middle of Canada. And um, Journey in Boston had these massive... Um, touring vans with TVs in there. You go in there, it was like going into a you know luxury condo. And my band, which was called Disaster Man, we had a, a tour bus that we made out of a 1976 school bus and painted it all black. <laughs> and we were parked between Journey and Boston. And they thought, like, who are these guys? Yeah. We partied constantly. Those guys went to sleep. Uh, that's an all another story. But yeah, it was really fun. How did you get into music? Well, I started just kind of, I remember seeing my um, aunt play piano and she would play songs like Blue Moon and things as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, really vivid memories of this piano. So then I, I thought I could figure songs out on it. And I started just kind of fumbling around and figuring out some um, songs, like just making up songs. And, and I thought that was just normal at the time. And my grandmother thought that there's really something going on here. She was telling my mom, maybe get him into music. And shortly after that, actually, I was about six, seven uh, then. And then when I was eight, I just turned eight. And uh, Burton Cummings, who's from my hometown, he, he's a Canadian icon. Yeah. Um, written songs like Stand Tall and Break It To Them Gently and was the lead singer of the Guess Who, famous for American Woman, of course. He was doing a CBC special uh, in Winnipeg. Uh, that was uh, CBC's National Network, of course, and it was called Portage in Maine. And they wanted to recreate his birthday as a kid. So uh, <laughs> my aunt worked for the CBC and she said, you know, my nephew, he's he looks just like Burton Cummings would as a kid. <laughs> I don't know how she thought that or figured that out. but Good marketing. And, yeah, good boy. <laughs> anyway, she uh, brought me in and I had to learn a couple of his songs off a of record uh, to mime for this skit. And I ended up getting that gig, and uh, it was funny because I remember he, him teaching me how to fake piano. He, he was actually in the scene. He was around for the shooting, and I did the scene with his mother, of course. And he was cueing me on how to hit the, the, the uh, marks when lip-syncing the song, and it was pretty hilarious. But I, I always think of that as my first music lesson because wow. I really learned music after that 
um, by listening like to, I took music lessons, but really, mm -hmm. especially on the guitar, it would be, I'd listen to a black Sabbath song and I'd be able to figure out the, the cool riff to it or something. And that was because I kind of, I got that early lesson where I had to learn this song and mime it exactly on when I was a kid and just over and over, listening to something over and over and it kind of got ingrained in me. So that's kind of how I started playing. And of course I wanted to play the drums, but my, my mother and father said, we don't, we don't have <laughs> drums in this house. We'll get you a guitar. And I, it turned out to be pretty good. I understand you started playing with guitar at 11 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I started wow. playing at 11 and uh, just your typical thing, you know, took lessons at the, the corner store and I learned a C chord and a G7 chord. And I remember the guy could play, uh, got, you got the whole world in his hands and he was from that. And I kind of got that going. And then uh, they was teaching me like when the saints go marching in to read notes. And I thought this was really boring, right? So mm -hmm. kind of quick guitar. Then I went to see uh, Van Halen the next summer and uh, that was my first concert. And I thought, okay, that's the kind of guitar I want to be, want, want to learn. And I just got back into it and just would sit in my room for hours. Just cassettes was the thing back then and records right. but were just getting good. This is like the eighties. <laughs> And uh, I, I rewind the cassette over and over and wear it out, just trying to figure out the guitar parts. Cause there's, there was no YouTube back then. You weren't listening. Like now you can say, type into YouTube, how do I play this song? And some yeah, of that, exactly. Oh, back then it was like, you learned off your neighborhood buddies or a couple lessons or just by listening. So I plus, ba plus back then, if you, if you knew how to play C, F and G, you, you were all set. Yeah, absolutely. Do you play yeah. guitar? You play yeah. the instruments? Right? Yeah, yeah, I used to. Yeah. Like Many it. years ago, my friend, many years ago. You know, there's a Rob McConnell that's also a, a big jazz. Trombonist, yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. So, yeah. Boss Brass, I've seen that band. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, I've had the uh, I've had the pleasure of producing shows for uh, B.J. Thomas, Peter Noon, Brighton Rock. Uh, wow. Oh, God, and the list goes on. Leonard Cohen. Uh, oh, man, one of my faves. Yeah. And I, I, I also had the opportunity of uh, meeting Gordon Lightfoot a few times when he came down to Toronto and when he was in Montreal. Yeah, so great times. We, you know, I feel like that was the soundtrack of uh, my youth, just on AM radio and stuff. Like hearing, and that's when I heard that guitar. Yeah, like, just uh, that folk guitar. That's yeah. like he played at the beginning of uh, if you could read my mind or Sundown. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, I, I never got to see Gordon Lightfoot live. And I just watched that documentary. Fantastic show, yeah. It, it's a, uh, yeah, and man, about his his life and what an incredible songwriter. One of the yeah. best. In fact, when I was at CJBK in London, I worked with Skip Brokaw from uh, uh, Lighthouse. Oh, wow. He was the drummer of, for Lighthouse, yeah. That's so awesome. Where, where, where does your quest for spirituality come from? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Where did the quest come from? Well, you know, that started for me a long time ago. I think actually that started, like, I've always felt a connection with spirituality. And it was, you know, maybe that started when I, I saw Star Wars as my first movie, too. I was about five or six. Mm -hmm. And I think I was infatuated with the Force, right? After oh, yeah. Star Wars. I mean, that was... I just remember coming home from that movie and thinking that was the most real thing I'd ever seen. Uh, by this point, I'd gotten kicked out of church, I think. Oh, I, congratulations. So did I. <laughs> I, I heard a, a story, I, I'm just, uh, maybe on one of your shows, where you talked about you got kicked out of the church. And I yeah. thought, that happened to me, too. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it was it was catechism. It was a Catholic school. Right. And I was asking too many questions. And it was exactly. Like, I was just very rambunctious at that age, you know, <laughs> so uh, that was it for me. And, you know, I look back as that as, as a crowning moment because I don't know, <laughs> I, I wasn't really into the scene, you know, if you know, right. I mean? but but the Star Wars thing, it was oh, I came home know. and I was trying to move things with my mind. But it, it's it's like I just felt that there is an energy force out there that's so much beyond. Um I had an awareness, I think. And my mom says when I was first born, I just had this incredible awareness. I, so I, I just think that's where that quest comes from. But then going through a life of, uh, geez, like a lot of just trials and tribulations. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, like I really, the quest really took a new level for me when I kind of realized that the music industry had become insane for me. And, uh, 
I had a, I, I was actually teaching at a major university in uh, in Halifax, and I had a great gig playing guitar in town um, at this restaurant three nights a week. In the summer, I'd tour with my band. Right. And, but I was, you know, I'd been used to this music industry of playing co festivals, concerts, and then playing bars and theaters and pubs. And, and when you play, when you get in that lifestyle, it's surrounded by liquor and drugs and everything else, as you probably, you know, everybody mm -hmm. knows the music sure. industry is about a crazy place. So I really got out of control with the drinking. And that's when I, uh, I thought and my life was really kind of hit rock bottom there and I, I was really it was out of hand so i that's when i thought i have to find get back to this spirituality and i went and i started taking a meditation course at the university that's taught by this physics professor and um you know that was really it was, he was kind of focused on like shri chim noi which was pretty cool i didn't know about any of this stuff and then shortly after that a friend suggested i go try out yoga and i got into yoga and um then i soon i started playing guitar for yoga classes so lately that's how it kind of led into the guitarfulness music i do but you know i've i've felt i've felt like my whole life it's been different moments of spiritual awakenings and you know things like that all right stand by my friend you and i have to take our first break exo nation our guest this hour is jason eastwood his website is guitarfulness.com and uh, his music is available for sale on his website check it out Great music, and we'll both be back on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, don't go away. Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer. You get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today.
Welcome back, everyone. Joining us from Winnipeg, Manitoba, here in the great far white north, known as Canada to everybody down south of the 49th, is uh, Jason Eastwood, and his website is guitarfulness.com. Jason, what's it like to play music, especially your guitar, in the spiritual zone? You know, it's almost always when it's good, you're in a spiritual zone. Um, because not, there's nothing that puts you more in the present moment mm -hmm. than uh, than playing an instrument and actually committing to it. Especially a lot of the a lot of the times when I play, I, I write these these guitarfulness pieces. I call it that music just because it's mindfulness, guitarfulness. I thought because mm -hmm. it's 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 pretty meditative. And what I do is I have little um, I compose little kind of melodic flows and. You know, um, there's generally generally like a really pul slow pulsing groove to it, and and then I leave a lot of space for spontaneity and improvisation, because that's when you have to th live one note to uh, the next. You really, I find for me, it gets me in that zone where I'm channeling something. I don't have time to think. You know, and Charlie Parker, the great saxophonist, said, um, you know, when you want to learn theory, you learn all that theory, but when you play, you forget it. And I learned that in high school when I was in jazz band. I, I never really forgot that because that's the way I always felt would be the, is the real music. Like, I don't, if I play a show, I could never really read, you know, read it off the, the charts and Charts, stuff. Yeah. I, I mostly like to memorize the music because then it's, you're in that moment and you're in that, um, that's present space where you're just creating in the moment and you're just yeah. right there. So it's, you really feel like I'm connected and tapped in. And sometimes, you know, I see my hand doing something and I'm not really thinking it at all. And I'm just kind of enjoying it as it comes out the way is the listener is right. I'm the listener and the performer. Mm -hmm. So there's so many um, aspects of music that get you into this zone like this. And, it's uh, and certain frequencies and vibrations you play that really kind of set you on a path of, of, of consciousness that's, that's totally different. Like I heard somebody say a quote just a few, few days ago, this guy, Adam McKinnis, he's kind of a, a hit songwriter, but he, he said music is really that the only thing on earth that it has, when you put an intention into it, it has that a vibration. Um, so it has that intentional vibration that it keeps mm -hmm. all the time. So if I if I put an intention and, and a vibration into a song and I send I record that, I can send it to you know somebody in across the world in in the in the you know in the middle of nowhere and they can listen to it and they can still feel that vibrational yeah. intent that comes from that music. So there's so much spiritual mu uh, magic that goes on inside music. It's it's the reason I, I've dedicated my life to it. It's just uh, you know I've been playing like. 40 years now and I've got a university degree in music and a master's in musicology. And it just, it, it's, it's one of those things that the more you learn about it, the more it opens up like physics or something. Right. You know, speaking about vibrations, it seems like, uh, in the early sixties, uh, Brian Wilson and the beach boys, you know, good vibrations. Uh, they knew what was going on. So did the hippies make love, not war and, and everything else. Why did it, why in your opinion, did it take so long for the rest of the world to catch on? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I would say a lot of that is because there's no, you know, and this might be a little bit controversial, but there's no money in 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 peace and love. <laughs> that's true. You don't know. It's not controversial. It's a fact. It's a fact that the yeah. mil military industrial complex is where big all the time. budgets go, right? Yeah. I mean, big time. Uh, this, this, the American government doesn't want to you know, have everyone in, in everyone across the world in a beautiful state because then they can't justify, you know, $57 trillion, whatever yeah. it is this year to build weapons. So that's a big part of it. And there's a lot of that that goes into music. Is There's actually a lot of the bad side to the music industry. And I think this was like why I got so anxious and was drinking so much about it because a lot of, if you get into especially the pop music and what it is like music is so powerful 
that it can be used in the wrong way because sure, if it's yeah, a yeah. vibration. It's a meditation, right? Like what do you, mm -hmm. when you hear a good, cool song, like a beat, you start. Yeah. That's right. You get into it because yeah. it just takes over, you know, That's you have it. to live the song. And what are you doing with your head like this? You're going, yes, yes, you're agreeing. So if you think about these lyrics a lot of times and you listen to, you know, I'm not for censorship or anything, but you, you like a lot of people are putting this music out for 12 year old kids that is all about guns and, uh, yeah. and sex and violence. And, and it's like, well, just like the video games. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and these, these, these music executives know exactly what they're doing. And they say, well, that's what the people want. That's what they would. It's like, no, these are kids and you gotta, you have to take a little more, more responsibility for what this art does, how mm -hmm. powerful this music is. That's what I believe. Right. So, so I think that's a big part of why it hasn't caught on, but you know, there's, you know, the great thing is when you're in the music, when you're in a, a spiritual music community or you're just playing festivals um, and, and you meet people and the people that listen to fit the fans, you get away from the industry of it. Right. It's all good vibrations mostly. Right. Yeah. It's just, that, that is so true. Um, where do you get the inspiration for your music? Yeah. A lot of it from nature. Um, you know, I, I live, in the in the city but i i really spend a lot of time going all around manitoba and you know all over you know california hawaii and beaches and and just getting inspiration from from beautiful hikes and beautiful places and just kind of i try to Nature. put that into the guitar fullness music right but but uh, so as far as like an external thing i think that's mm -hmm. like the inspiration but i mean a lot of it is just, it's just, it's just inspiration to, to express. It's just like when I empty myself, I just, I want to, I feel like I'm channeling stuff through the guitar that I could never say, or, you know, articulate really. That's, it's just a matter of, I've been playing the guitar for so long that I can sit down and, and, and create an emotion with it. Yeah. And that's, uh, that that's it's inspiration enough just to play it, it in my opinion that is this that is the talent of a true master you know we've seen the same thing with uh beethoven bach and and anyone who loves music and who becomes part of the music plays the exact way that you just described you become yeah. the music that you play oh yeah and and not only that but all those musicians you just mentioned and all the greats mm -hmm. well maybe beethoven's an exception but he, because he was pretty full of himself but they all <laughs> credit uh they most musicians credit it being somewhere in the air they're just they're just yeah. a conduit for it right like keith richard says you know the the songs are in the air you just have to be like an antenna and pick it up i remember when i first heard him say that i'm like that's that's true you just have to be open to it and they're kind of floating around and you have to be the vehicle that that idea can get out there but a lot, it, when you really write something good the best songs and i've ever recorded the best performances i've had i definitely didn't feel like it was me it was like you don't, you don't most musicians are so humble because when you have this great experience you like you realize that there's something more going on here. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm so great. Yeah. It's like, I'm grateful to be a part of this. Well, let me ask you, what was it like the very first time that you were in front of a large number of people and you knew that you had control of that audience? Mm, that's a great question. That was the first time. Yeah. Let me think back here. Cause you know, one thing, when it starts off, you play a lot of bad gigs first. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. I'm trying to think what it, that actually, that turned and I actually, I got it. I got it. So I remember playing when I was learning guitar, like I had to learn the Hawaii five O theme, which you probably, like. and for this, this music competition. And I just like my stomach turned to play this competition. <laughs> Cause so I bombed that. And that was like, I was like, Oh, this, I don't like playing in front of people. Right. But yeah. then, uh, because I was taking guitar very seriously at the time. But um, the first time that happened, like I remember it was, it was a, the one that come pops in my head. There's a, have you ever heard of a, a guy named Big Dave McLean? He's a Canadian blues legend. No, I'm He's sorry. from Winnipeg. He's actually 
he, he's maybe not that much. Uh, he's not that known outside of Winnipeg, but he played with Muddy Waters. He wrote oh, a song yeah, for there's Muddy a, there's Waters. A legend, yeah. Yeah, Muddy Waters recorded his song. So around Winnipeg, he is the blues guy. And when I was uh, 16 or 15 in, in high school, we had a benefit concert to try to raise money because we had this great jazz band to go to Ottawa. Right. And uh, Big Dave came out and um, we were going to be his blues band for the day. I was on guitar and we had a bass player and another kid on drums. And he came in and he taught us everything we were going to do to be his band and i was really into blues at the time i was listening to nothing but steve ray vaughn and bb <laughs> king and all this great guitar stuff and uh i remember when he, when he just gave me that first solo and i started i just like i was feeling really good that day i ripped into it and the place was packed it's this big community center and just at the end the crowd erupted and i thought oh i really got them with this guitar now and the rest yeah. of that show i just felt like in this special space where is a real connection with them but just this that you know i was i was this was all like the thing is when you're playing like that like i'm playing and i'm like like oh this is just regular stuff like because when you practice a lot you think it's not that great but then the, the way that the crowd erupted i was like there's something really special going on here. yeah you take all the little elements and you just combine it and the audience is a major part of any performers mm -hmm what makes that entire performance come together is the audience oh absolutely yeah that, that's 100 when, when you're playing your 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 guitar fullness um and you're into your spiritual mode do members of the audience uh experience uh, spiritual uh, events as well as spiritual awakening or or spiritual experiences yeah you know that's the reason that i i really because obviously I've told you so many different stories of music I've played already, of different yeah. styles and genres. I mean, I've been doing this forever. But the reason, the music, reason I really went forward with the guitarfulness stuff is because, um, like I said, I got into yoga because um, I needed to find a spiritual outlet to and really center myself and get off mm -hmm. the, the liquor. <laughs> and I, um, the, the owner of the yoga studio asked me to play some guitar for um, some yoga classes. So I thought, sure, this is great. She recognized me from around town from playing. So I brought my classical guitar in and a beautiful handmade guitar um, from Japan uh, made in 1978, but it's made out of ro uh, ro um, Brazilian rosewood from the wow. Amazon forest. So luckily it was hot yoga and this guitar, maybe because it's from the Amazon forest, really like the room it sounded great in there which i was surprised i thought it would blow up in the heat but <laughs> anyway i uh so i started i started playing and it was one of those things where i had some ideas of kind of what i'd play for i've never played for a yoga class before, right so i thought i'd been to a few so i understood the meditative flow of it and i started playing in that groove and i just let kind of things come out and i was kind of composing it on the spot and at the end of the class uh like a lot of people came up to me and they had that the shining eyes and just said, you know, I'm so relaxed. I don't know. That was the most beautiful, beautiful music. It was, what was that? And I said, well, I don't know. I just kind of came up with it. And, and this happened over and over. I started playing there every week and people uh, wanted some recordings of it and stuff. So, and I made, uh, I recorded one big 20 minute piece. I, I kind of had it as a meditation just to give out and i was getting these responses like um that people i'd give the recordings to would say you know i listen to this in the morning and the night and um all of the you know all the time and my pets love it my kids mm. um calm down i just put it on the background and it's just there's something about it and i thought well i i did play when i recorded it i played it with this incredible intention like i put mantras all over the studio that said um, some I don't know if you ever heard of the Hawaiian healing art. It's called Ho Pono Pono. No, I haven't. Okay, it's pretty cool. It's all about these mantras of love and forgiveness mm -hmm. and gratefulness. And uh, my mother is was is into Hawaiian stuff a lot, so I really got into that for a bit. Yeah, and it's about zeroing yourself, which means letting rid of all your baggage, etc. But I put that intention into the music. And I was surprised because this started coming back to me. Um, and then I recorded my first album and I did that same thing. And I was, I put out the album and I had some, one lady purchased it. I remember right at the beginning, her name was Pam. And 
a few days later, I was just sitting, you know, checking my email and uh, I got this message from her that said, you know, she was in the, in this really down part in her life her, her, her parents' health was failing and there was one of them has Alzheimer's and oh, one of them was really, yeah, it was a really heartbreaking story. And she was going on this email, but she, her music, it started with, Oh my God, Jason, I would be lost without your music was her that start the, 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 the email. And then she talked about how she was at her wits end and, and uh, just sitting around and she was, didn't know what to do with herself and, and it, was a, it was a horrible night and she, everything was going wrong and she didn't know she was overwhelmed and her phone lit up and uh she said she, this album that she i just bought off her just started playing automatically and she started listening to it and she hadn't really listened to it much yet and the more she listened to it she started all these tears said coming mm -hmm. down her face and she had this whole story about this. And, and this is a week after I started the guitar from this site on, I just started a Facebook site and started selling this meditation through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, what a, like an amazing sign that this is, I'm on the right path here with this music. So I really dedicated myself to it from 2018 when this happened on. And that's why I've got 33 albums out there now. But Holy cow, 33. I, yeah, yeah. My I lord, mean, man. <laughs> it, it's all just instrumental guitar music, right? So I can actually still. produce it pretty quick. I've been trying to do an yeah. album a month for a while. That's still a lot. You're right. I'm pretty yeah. prolific because I love doing it. But um, I've really, uh, man, I've received so many, so many amazing letters from people with stories. Um, I don't know if good things, anymore, good things, ha good things happen to good people, Jason. Well, that sounds but, like you're touching a lot of hearts, my friend. Oh, thank you. And, you know, that's that's why I, I keep doing it. All right. We've got to take a break, Jason. Please stand by. Next donation, if you'd like to get a copy of any of uh, the 30 albums that our friend over here, Jason Eastman, has produced, visit his website, guitarfulness.com. This is the Excel. I'm Rob McConnell. Jason and I return after this short break. Whatever you do, don't worry. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. I filmed 16 minutes on March 5th, 1994, 16 minutes of broad daylight UFO activity. The other side, the spirit realm, is a parallel dimension which runs, uh, uh, which coexists with ours. And what spirits are doing is they're sending waves of frequency from that dimension to ours. Uh, the government instituted the truth embargo. The government poured disinformation and misinformation into this field, encouraging hoaxes and any other foolishness. It created a truth vacuum that naturally was going to be filled with theories and, and assertions and other stuff. Uh, the oil oligarchs mm -hmm. and the banks and the, and the people who are making decisions that are leading us down the wrong path. I mean, 
They've undermined the research, intimidated and threatened witnesses. Uh, the government is responsible for the fact that the, uh, the status of this issue is not resolved. I'm Rob McConnell, host and executive producer of the X-Zone radio show. Now we are set to bring the amazing world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology to broadcast TV and online video with the development of Exxon TV. Exxon TV will now bring our loyal listeners and new viewers face to face with the most controversial and well-known personalities in the field of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. From scientists to theorists, astronauts to adventurers, celebrities, pundits, advocates and naysayers, They'll all join our rapid-fire TV broadcast, interactive discussion, and debate. Interest in the paranormal and parapsychology has never been more intense, and it continues to grow. The truth is out there, so take a deep breath and join us as we step into the light. For more information about Exxon TV, please contact me, Rob McConnell, directly at these coordinates, Rob McConnell at ExxonTV.com. And we're back. Jason Eastwood is my guest, www.guitarfulness.com. Jason, have you yourself had any paranormal experiences? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, you can see where I am right now, but it actually is not that great of a background. But I'm actually at a, a museum. Um, this is a museum that I kind of use the top floor of to make a lot of noise because i live in a condominium so i use it as kind of a recording <laughs> studio and this was a building built in 1911 wow and uh right behind me here actually i had a we had, I had a group set up a band practice once and uh this this was there's there's more history to this building is because it was uh, the municipal hall for the area of saint james where i am in the middle of winter in the west end of winnipeg sorry mm -hmm. so there's a jail in the basement there's a big safe i mean this was this was the city hall in 1911 the hub and, yeah and some things must have gone down here because you know the staff always talks about ghosts and things walking around but anyway this was this one night so we had our rehearsal we were recording some music and uh we finished up and we were just discussing um what had just happened uh, what we just played that night in the in the middle of the room standing there and uh i was directly looking at these chairs and one of them just flipped over it was just standing there was a chair just right up to it and it just flipped over and i thought okay did i just see that like luckily <laughs> my drummer my buddy collins also saw it and he looked at me and we said okay let's get out of here like this is there's something going on so th that's funny because this place right here was was uh, uh now now I, I feel like there's energies in here too but i feel like they're all working with me so i so i get some great recordings in here it's, uh, it's got a really good vibe actually i did a, a whole guitar album called history um i'm chilling through history with the guitar and i did songs from the last 400 years on classical guitar some of the biggest hits and i actually set up mics all over the museum and got a really cool sound but um besides that uh you know there's there's uh yeah i've got a really incredible it's almost paranormal experience on the, on the way I, that i on the night that i actually quit drinking i don't know if you want to, oh yeah sure let's hear i can tell you i was this is more of a personal thing but i was like i said i would have been at my my wits end with mm -hmm. the drinking and 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 I decided this was it. I was gonna, I'm having my final drink and I was gonna videotape it to myself. And um, videotape, not, you know, record on my phone. That is how, how old am I, right? videotape. <laughs> yeah, I got out the old RCA VCR. Yeah, VHS three quarter thing. inch or half inch or beta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But so I decided this was it. So I, I had this last toast to myself and that was it. That was over, uh, it was March 14th down, uh, uh, 
2016. So that was, that was that good for time. you. Congratulations. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel so great. I'd never go back, but um, you know, not that I judge anybody else does. It just didn't work for me, yeah. but I have a friend, uh, a great friend that was really struggling with, with alcohol too. And he lived in a, in a town in BC. I used to live in and secluded town. And he, he'd been to rehab and um, man, I just, I, th I saw what he was going through. He came to visit a little bit, um a while before that and and i well he went back to golden and I, I heard from other friends that he was really struggling with it he said he wasn't drinking but we all knew he was faking it right and anyway so he was because he was drinking behind everyone's back and yeah. it was a bad scene so anyway i had this last drink to myself that and then i went to i thought this is it this is i'm making this final decision this is this is it so i i went to work the next day and the next morning and I got to work I'm a new sober self. And but an hour after I was there, uh, I was working at a music store. Well, I got a call from uh, my friend that said my friend had died. He had passed away. He actually, he had killed himself that night. Oh before. no. Yeah. And I thought, what are the, and it turns out like now, cause I went to, to, you know, after that, the fact I found out everything happened, it was almost as that, that exact time that I was taking that last drink that he had had enough of not being able to get off the bottle. I think there's other extremists, obviously more circumstances, but sure. it was just, we shared that struggle. So to find out, like, it just gives me chills to this day, even because I mean, there it is. Right there, I, I said, well, that's, I don't know if, you know, he gave his life for, you know, I felt like I would be betraying, you know, everything if I went and did this again. It was like, here's the ultimate sign of what's going to happen if I keep drinking. Mm -hmm. I've lost a friend that way. And that was just the timing of that wow. was just unbelievable. It was, it was, you know, but it happened, so. Are there any studies or is there any research that's been done uh, to um, to show what benefits of spiritual music there is with people? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the, well, there's a, the, the journal of, um, the journal of science and, and um, there's, there's so many really. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just tell you some of the, 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 sure, please. the main notes. I mean, there's, not only spiritual benefits, but the, like the one of the first great books I read on the study uh, is a book called Super Learning on the Power of Music and the Benefits. And um, this was a, a group in Bulgaria run by a guy named George Lazanov, Dr. George, and, and they were studying how to really optimize the human brain. And they came up with the best way to memorize anything is by using a certain tempo of a certain style of classic music, classical music, like Baroque music at 60 BPMs. And there's something about that music that when you listen to it mm -hmm. and you beat this into your head, you listen, you say something over and over, you memorize the content. And I started doing this. This was in the, in the nineties. I was in university when I was, uh, reading this book and I started trying this. I made, made a tape of all these certain classical pieces from Bach and uh, some Vivaldi and stuff uh, even earlier, but it had to be a certain tempo and they, they, they researched all these songs and it really did supercharge my learning in my brain. And so, um, that was, that was, you know, benefit number one. I thought it, it entrains your nervous system to get into a flow state is what it really does. Mm -hmm. And you can learn anything. But then there's, um, lately I've been more into the, the healing aspects where it, it's, it's kind of like we have these, you asked about the spiritual aspects. We have these deep, uh, almost unknown hidden traumas, you know, things in it that have stressed us in the past. Maybe right. something that happened. Maybe uh, we were at the mall as, as a, with our parents as a kid and they left us alone for two seconds and, you know, it's nothing, but our subconscious mind yeah. might have, you know, registered that as a traumatic experience. That's kind of holding us back a little bit in our life. Or maybe, you know, if we repress that and it's all these little things add up like that and they can start, um, if we don't let them go, 
they can kind of start running your life where you're 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 basically kind of on autopilot to try to avoid these fears so what music does is it lets us feel these feelings that otherwise would be repressed and when we feel these feelings they feel seen they we you know they feel oh it's like it's almost like a little kid or something these feelings it's like oh i i i um i feel I, I feel this feeling I'm letting it wash over my body and then it's like, it's okay. And then you kind of are just at peace with it and then you can let it go. And I think when we listen to music, you know, you have those nostalgic feelings. So sometimes it takes you back. Sure. And then you have also feelings of emotional yeah. um, release. And, and I think that is all going on behind the, um, behind the curtain, if you will. Yeah, you know, on a on a hyper level, right? With music, there's 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 vibrations and cells, and and I think there's it's letting go of certain things that we need to let go of, um, with in not really a tangible sense, almost, right? It's just feeling these things subconsciously. Well, my friend, the the time has come when you and I must say so long for tonight, Jason. Love to have you back on in the future. It was great talking with you. Rob. Hey continued success thank you for bringing the music that you do to so many people and uh like i said don't be a stranger tell our listeners where they can buy your music and find out more about you one more time yeah well thank you so much for having me on the x zone this is a blast i love your show and thanks uh, partner and they can find my music at uh, guitarfulness.com that's just the word guitar g-u-i-t-a-r-f-u-l N-E-S-S, guitarfulness, just like mindfulness.com. And uh, just go there. You can leave me a message or, or send, me, send me an email. Or My name's Jason at guitarfulness.com would be my email. And I'd love to hear more. Jason, take care of yourself. Safe travels and uh, keep the great work up, friend. Thanks a lot, Rob. Good night. Explanation, our guest this hour has been Jason Eastwood. He is in Winnipeg, Manitoba, a beautiful province here in Canada. His website is guitarfulness.com. And uh, visit his website, listen to his music. You're in for a treat. I'll be back on the other side of this break as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.